Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now in this video I'm hopefully going to repair this Game Boy Advance. It doesn't power on anymore and when you insert the batteries and try to power it on, the batteries get rather hot. That makes me suspect that there is a short circuit somewhere, maybe a bad capacitor of some kind. So for good measure Let's actually measure the resistance between the contacts. Now this should be zero, which it is, and this should be, well, not 2.3K. That's a little bit too low. So, might be a capacitor that has failed. So I suggest that we open this thing up. Now it's a rather interesting screw uh, choice. It's no Philips or anything. It's a yeah, tri-star thingy. Luckily enough, it's in this little screwdriver kit that I've got. Truly amazing kit. I really encourage you to buy one. So let's take this puppy apart and see if we can find the problem. Now if you've got the same experience as that this one is having with the batteries becoming hot, I really recommend that you don't power it on anymore to prevent further damage to the components as that might just as well re result in a system that's not working at all so. now there's totally no sign of life also there's no sign of life when you insert a game cartridge nothing I think somebody already tried to open this thing. There she comes. So, we gotta see if we can replace this screw, because that ain't working anymore. But I think it should all come off. All right, so. I'm planning on not lifting the PCB because there's a screen attached to it and I don't really seem to where is the screen attached with this flat flex cable oh yeah I think it's attached with this flex flat, flat flex cable but I don't think there will be much at the bottom so let's just measure some of the components and try to identify the short circuit. Now, of course, again, let's measure this. Oh, it's even less now. This one's dropping, so yeah, I don't know what this capacitor is, but I think it's bad. Let's check if they're connected to the same rails. No, they're not. I think the capacitor is really messing up my measurements. So I'll try to see if we can measure its capacitance. But I think it's probably a good practice to remove it. Oh. In order to see what happens when it's removed. This one seems to be fine. And actually, I'm suspecting that the switch could be bad because. Okay, this is okay now. Why is there. I can't see it. Why is there. 
two kilo ohms across a switch. That's directly connected. That was directly connected to ground. So I've got the schematic for the power switch and what they've done is they've connected a bleed resistor to one of the pins of this thing so that when you switch it off all the capacitors will be discharged which is pretty smart but I think that that's the system that might be misbehaving right now so I yeah, there's one CC2 so when it's off which is to this side one and C should directly be connected which is well yeah it's connected but it's not the best connection then it connects to one or is this the other one no I think it's at the bottom yeah here you can see the uh, the bleed off resistor so that's good so this is a ground pad plane yeah and SW1.2 which is this pin should not be connected to anything except for the fuse which it is this and this one yes now when we oh these two are connected together yes now when we turn it on this should no longer be yeah this is present because that's pin one but this I, i'm thinking even when it's turned off it's drawing current and i think that was 100 milliamps so that means that this switch is not working properly because the switch is not fully disconnecting the batteries then so there's a resistance of 1.8k between the battery input and the VN pin which is quite strange since they're disconnected they are disconnected so there shouldn't be a voltage between those two and check that it's two yeah two and C look over here there's two and there's C and the only thing that two goes to is battery plus and the switch and the fuse that's all so if there is a resistance between two and C it means that the switch is not good so that's the only thing that's basically possible by now is that the power switch is not good so let's solder this puppy back in and we'll see if I can find a power button that matches the power button that's currently in this thing all right let's search so unfortunately I couldn't find a switch so I'll just have to order one and wait till that one arrives. So I'll uh, keep you guys updated. So I'm back with an update. I just looked around on Google a little and it turns out that you can actually open the connector. And you can do that by putting a tweezer or a knife in between this top thing and holding your soldering iron on this ground point then you should be able to lift it off so let's uh, give it a go this thing has to come off otherwise so there we go that's one side, now the other side. Let's 
there we go, there she is. So now if we remove this little piece, we can see the sliding contacts. Oh yeah, they're, they look very bad. So let's get uh, a cotton swap and let's try to clean them. So I'll try to make it a little bit more pointy. So it will hopefully, yeah, that one goes all the way down. So I'll use some alcohol, spray some in there and rub it against the copper plates now it's rather hard so let me check if I have a uh, eraser that's about this size Now I do. Erasers work best against corroded metals, but you do need to apply some pressure. And I do need to dry it first, otherwise it won't work. So it definitely looks uh, a lot cleaner. Now you don't have to replace the power switch. You can just remove the corrosion and it will be good. Now I'm also going to try to lift up these things a little. The switch doesn't feel particularly confident when switching. Let's put it back. And let's put this back on here. And let's solder it in place. Alright, let's see how it feels, because it felt a little bit squidgy at the first. Yeah, it's on and it's off now. Now finally, let's measure the resistance. To see if any of this fixed the issue. There was resistance between the two common pins, I thought. Now there's none, and there's none over here, which is excellent. And this is also, well, almost open. Now there shouldn't be any resistance, there you go. This is still a little bit too high, but we'll see what happens when we apply some power to it. So, 2.8 volts. Yeah, it's drawing uh, 140 milliamps, and I can hear something working. Let's turn it on and see what it does now. Yeah, that's still drawing too much current. 
the power button is working, but it's drawing too much current now. So we've got something else that's not really uh, cooperating with us. Uh -huh, and there's a resistor that I think I accidentally touched. It's over here. So I'm searching for D2, which is a diode and it's close to T1. And I'm, I might be suspecting that thing to have blown, but I can't find the diode. So maybe I'll just remove the PCB from the case, because it does look like the diode is at the bottom. So yeah, let's remove it. So there's a screw over here. Let's hope that the button buttons don't fly out of this thing. Let's remove the cable for the display. Very carefully. There you go. So we should be able to lift this thing. There you go. There are a few components over here. A little bit more than I thought that they were going to be. What's this around here? What's this gunk? I think it has some water damage. Wait, we've still got this cotton swab. Spray a little bit of alcohol. There's SW1 and SW2. I was looking for them. And here's T1. So between the drain and the source, there should be a diode maximum forward voltage of 1.2 volts. And really it's exceeding that. Let's reverse these things. Let's uh, actually feel if the temperature rises of Q5. Oh, wait, what? With the screen disconnected, it's drawing around three milliamps. Now let's connect the screen. Not sure why this isn't going in, but, and uh, let's check again. So this is with the screen. Oh, it's off. 
But wait, what? It's not drawing any current anymore. What? It just went good. It just went good. What the actual... This is strange, man. This is really strange. It just went good. So, my guess is that it has something to do with the gunk that was on the back. And when I clean it up, the problem is all gone. So, let's remove this, because it's not getting together properly. I think some something was going on around there. I think it was shorting out or... But it's working. Wasn't expecting that. See? Don't spill things on your Game Boy. And don't game near liquids and all those things. Because you'll break it. So let's put this thing back together. We can always add the slidey button later on. Like so. Now we should still be able to. There you go. Will it? Ah, oh, there it go. There it goes. And buttons are working. Let's screw it in place prevent it from popping out again and install all, all these bumpers and etc now there's this little thing over here this little notch I'm not really sure what it's there for oh it's this side there you go it's for the um, cord that you can put on here to Make sure that you don't drop the thing. Uh, is this everything? Yes, this is everything. So now it's time for these, for this to go back on. And let's actually screw it back together and test it. I think I do still have a Game Boy game, so we can test it out. And the final screw. So I'm going to screw this in rather carefully. Oh yeah. That's a nice feeling. So everything is together. Let's find some batteries and let's find the game most importantly. So I'm not able to find the game, unfortunately, but let's turn it on one last time to make sure that it works. Nice! So it's working again, guys. And let's put this battery cover back on here. And we can call this a day. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something from this. Namely, always inspect both sides of the PCB. As I just didn't do. Thanks again for watching this video. If you like this type of content, please let me know down below. And I'll hope to catch you guys in the next video.
Bye. Oh, hey, hello. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well, if you want, you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.